Hi there guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another adult story time. So this week's story is called The Woods and I really hope you enjoy it. A pang of searing pain raged through the back of my neck as it jolted up out of the soil. In a large intake of breath I felt dirt and debris sucked into my throat and over my tongue. My left eye was completely shut and I could not open it. As I searched with my fingers through the mud, looking for my glasses, I could hear shouting echoing behind me. Find her! Find her now! She's still got the other one! I guessed I was her. I shot up from the ground and started to run, letting the dirt drool out of my mouth as I simultaneously gasped for air. Muddy saliva flew either side of me as I made my way through the sticky terrain. I puffed and panted and my lungs and throat burned in the cold air. Leave me alone, I thought as I ran stubbornly as fast as I could. There she is! I heard a shrill man scream in the distance. I kept running through the trees. They masked me every second step and I assumed that this was enough. I jumped over a large gnarled tree root and felt a painful prick in my right arm. Instinctively, I grabbed at my arm and pulled out a dart, filled with liquid. Terrified by its possible content, I threw it in the opposite direction as I ran. On my next step, I gasped as my foot fell completely through the ground and I landed underground into the darkness. A hand plastered itself to my mouth and dragged me further down into the hole. Judging by how my day was going so far, this didn't look good, even out of only one eye. Shh. A voice whispered sternly as they continued to drag me through what seemed to be a makeshift tunnel. It was damp and hot, almost suffocating. We could hear boots thundering over our heads on the surface, still shouting at each other. As this sound started to subside, I let out a breath. Seeing as I had not already been murdered by whoever was holding on to me, I took the opportunity to check my eye. As I brushed my hand over it gently, my eyelid felt swollen, but empty and I could feel prickly stitches where my eyelid used to be. I knew they had taken it. Some of the children in the next town over had been being born without any at all, and the donor list had decreased dramatically since the ice caps melted. This really was the turning point. At least I still had one good eye, right? They'll be really upset when they find out my prescription, I thought. The hand around my mouth slowly released and two hands braced my shoulders to turn me towards them. I could barely see a face, but what I could see seemed to be a woman. As I squinted, I was aware of the strong smell of smoked paprika, like she'd been cooking. We have to be quiet, she said, but tell me your name. I tried to speak, but sound wouldn't come out at first. I coughed gently and then struggled. Marie. Okay, Marie. There's a tunnel behind me. If you crawl through it, you'll be under the fence and back in your side of town. Okay, I gurgled, mud caking my back teeth. She put her hands on my waist and guided my body into a hole and pushed me through by my legs until I was able to crawl on my own. I dragged my body inch by inch through the mud, gladly realising I was not claustrophobic. All the while, wishing that the light would not improve so that I could actually see what the jagged and long stones really were that I was crawling over. The soil smelled foul, like chemicals or solvent, and it permeated through me unpleasantly. The light began to grow, and I could see the opening to the other end of the tunnel crudely covered with grass and green branches. As I wiggled on ahead, I reached out to move them away when someone did it for me. A large hand reached in and offered itself to me. I grabbed it and was dragged out of the dirt quickly. I was now standing in front of a small, scrawny man wearing sandals and a pair of thin-rimmed glasses. His hair was mousy brown and flitted off in many directions. Hi. 
I said, my head angled up to compensate for the loss of my other eye. Hi Marie, I'm going to take you home now. I smiled. We walked together over the freshly trimmed grass in silence for a while, determined. Him sensing I didn't want to talk, and me not really knowing what to say. So, why did they choose you? He piped up. That is a fantastic question, one I'd really love to know the answer to myself, I thought. I didn't speak. Well, you must have done something. The courts don't just give out blinding punishments for no reason. I began to sweat with pure rage as my cheeks flushed to match. It wasn't ordered by the courts, I snapped. He let the silence breathe for a second before he spoke again. Oh, well, I'm sorry, he ventured. You're not the only one. Look, if I tell you what happened, can we stop talking about it? He nodded. My friend, Abby, was pregnant. Not really enough that you would know, but she was so excited. She couldn't stop talking about it. Anyway, she left one of her windows open last night and they took her. Her husband called me, panicking, and I just decided I had to go. The kids aren't born with any eyes now, so they always take both. And I just... I don't know. She just... she needed to see her baby. At least once. I looked at the floor, still annoyed I hadn't found her. The grass started to look a little patchy, and I could see dirt peeping through it as we walked. I tripped over a little, and the man moved to stand in front of me. In a strange voice, he said, You better keep looking. And in the blink of one eye, he was gone. I kept walking, and suddenly bumped my shoulder off a sturdy, textured surface and recoiled a little. As I continued to walk forward, I could hear a buzzing, and the ground felt less stable underneath my feet. I heard someone say, There she is. Someone stomped over to me and removed my mobile from my back pocket. I saw its screen flash past me as my eyesight reeled. Shall I get this for you? They said, as I struggled to see who it was. Marie! Marie, are you there? I heard Abby's voice rail through my head, obviously on the highest volume that my speakerphone would allow. I panicked and opened my eye to see that I was back with my captors. Whatever was in the dark must have knocked me out a little. I had walked back, of my own volition. A man's gruff voice picked up and said, Some of her will be back soon. Then all I could hear was the screeching of the dial tone and the thump of my own body as it collapsed on the dirt below. So, if you're still here, thank you so so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like if you like this video and come back next week for another adult story time. Bye guys.